Good morning, and welcome to A Moment of Truth. I'm Stoney Kaiser, pastor of the Church of God of the Union Assembly here in Dalton, Georgia. What a great day it is in the Lord. Do you love Jesus Christ? Do you know Him as your Savior? Have you accepted that He is the Lord of your life and turned your life over to Him? Have you surrendered all to Him? If not, today there is no better day. The invitation is going out. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. There's a rest that comes with believing in Jesus Christ that, that this world cannot give you. The joys of this world will not give you that rest. Uh, Satan will beat your door down and try his best to bother you and, and destroy you. But if you'll come to the Lord, you can have something to fight with. You can have his word. You can have a, a life that this world does not know. Jesus said they couldn't see him because they can't see his word. Well, if you can see the, the light of the gospel, then you ought to be happy. If our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. So we don't want to be lost. We don't want you to be lost. I'm kind of like the prodigal son. When the father seen him coming, he rejoiced and, and uh, said, bring the, the best robe we got and kill the fatted calf. And he put a ring on him and was just excited that his son that was once lost was now found. That's what I want. You know, the Bible says there's more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that repenteth than 99 just persons that need no repentance. So there's just a joy to serving the Lord and having salvation. We've been talking uh, this last couple of weeks, been preaching about the light and the life that we get by seeing the light, seeing the word, understanding the blood and the power and the, the life that, uh, light, the life of bl the blood of life. The, that's where we get our lifeline is, is through the blood. Just like the, the natural body today lives off the, the natural blood, well, our, spiritually, we live off of that blood of Jesus Christ, His His Word, and uh, thank God it, it. You know, there was a time when, when God first sent Jesus first sent out the commission. It was not to go into any city of the Samaritans and and uh, or the Gentiles enter you not, but that last commission that He sent out, He said, "Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved." So. That is the beauty of, of everything we have today is, is having the opportunity to believe in Jesus Christ. I want to go in a little bit more into this subject that we've been teaching about. And this is going to be in the, in the book of Genesis, the 49th chapter. And uh, we'll start reading about the 10th verse. This is Genesis 49 and verse 10. Uh, bear with me just a minute. Let me turn over there. You know, God, God give us a, a, a way out of all the corruption and the bondage that's in the world. And, and it, it's through His Son, Jesus Christ. So if we still lived in the way that we were before Jesus Christ come, man, we, we would be a miserable people. But uh, God has given us this opportunity. Sorry, I've opened up to Exodus, and I'll never find the 49th chapter in Exodus. It don't go that far. Uh, but the 49th chapter of Genesis in the 10th verse. So uh, let's, let's read a little bit about this about this, uh, this light that we're thinking about. This is in uh, the 10th verse. It said, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until shallow come. Unto him shall the gathering of the people be. So God, God is expecting a, a gathering in, in these verses that we're, we're about to read here. And who are these people that he's gathering? You remember? Like we said earlier, that when Jesus first come, it was just the Jews. Jesus, uh, that woman had come to Jesus and asked him, you know, for, for the food and, and uh, to, to pray for the daughter, I believe it was. And Jesus said, I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. She said, of the truth, Lord, but the dogs desire the crumbs. The Gentiles was considered the dogs. The dogs desire the crumbs that fall from the master's table. She was wanting the word of life. She was wanting to eat some of the word that Jesus Christ was giving to others. So, you know, Jesus Christ turned to the Gentiles, and, and it was because of the, the Jews' unbelief is what caused that. But I want to I go to Isaiah, the second chapter. That tenth, that tenth verse said, in the end of that, it said, Unto him shall the gathering of the people be. That was shallow. Now, Jesus was shallow, so let's see a little bit more about this. Acts, the second chapter. And this is one of my one of my favorite passages, I've got quite a few, but man, I really love this one because it's the, it's the sentiments of my heart. It's what, I, it's what I really 
strive to try to teach even in our church here how that we should have love for people. God did. So let's see what this says. This is in Isaiah, the second chapter, and the, um, the second verse reading down. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. Hold right there. We'll come back to that in a minute. But I want to go to the book of, of Acts in the second chapter. After that Jesus Christ had been crucified and, and, and he had resurrected, when they, when they crucified him there, in this Acts, the second chapter, the, the Holy Ghost had come back and at the day, on the day of Pentecost, and there was this great power. And, and, and uh, Peter preached a sermon there. And this, in this sermon, he caused conviction on a lot of people's hearts. And, and, and they wanted to know what they could do for salvation. How can they have this life? You remember last week we talked about how that the, through the life of, of Jesus Christ, we are saved through that, uh, that word of God, that blood of the New Testament, that blood of life. That's what causes us to have everlasting life. Well, let's, let's see what, uh, what, what he said here in this Acts, the second chapter. He said, now, uh, this is the 36th verse, Acts 2 and 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they had heard this, we'll read on down, uh, I think, through the 40th verse, somewhere in there. Now, when they had heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? They wanted to know what to do to have this life. They wanted to know what to do. See, Jesus Christ had been crucified, and this power came. He said he'd go back to the Father, and the Father would pray. The, he would pray to the Father, and he would send the Holy Ghost back. Well, we know that Jesus Christ resurrected and went to the Father because the Holy Ghost is here. So this Holy Ghost that he's fixing to talk about had to come after his resurrection, and that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. Peter said unto them, Men and brethren, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Watch this. This is the part that I really want to talk about. For this, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, afar off, the Gentiles. The message that I want to bring to you is a light to the Gentiles. We didn't have, we was in darkness. You remember we, we started last week about and, and the week before about uh, in him was life and the life was a lot of men and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehendeth it not. Well, as long as you're in sin, you won't see the word of God. But when you turn and you, you become a worshiper of the Lord, God hears you and he understands that you are wanting to learn of his way and it'll get into your heart and we'll show you that here in a minute. Uh, this promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off and as many, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. You see, our, our, to be saved, if we go back to that uh, in Hebrews or Romans, the sixth, fifth chapter and the tenth verse, uh, if, if when we were enemies to, the, enemies to God, for if when we were enemies to God, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. That's that blood. What was Peter talking to them? To repent and be baptized. That, that word of Jesus Christ. What was Jesus teaching when he was here? Repentance, repentance, repentance. He preached to turn from your sin. Turn from your evil way and, and the wickedness and the violence and, and the things. Man, this world needs this. This world needs to hear repentance. They need to turn their life around. This is for you. That 40th verse, and with, with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Let me read that next verse. I love this. Then they that, glad, that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 so, uh, souls. And man, I can keep on and on, but I want to read this 42nd. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and prayer. You see, it's, it's not just saying that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You've got to continue in. You've got to continue in the, in the obedience that he, that he done. We just done our communion service the other, other day, and, and uh, when we had the washing of the saints' feet, and I know a lot of people don't do that anymore, but we believe in that. We, we enjoy that, 
because the Lord told them, said, happy are ye if ye do these things. If we follow the commandments of the Lord, we'll be happy. You'll have joy. There's joy that's just unspeakable. And, and that's because you have, doesn't matter what you're going through in this life, if you can lay your head down on your pillow and know that your heart is right with God, it doesn't matter what you go through in this world, you've got a consolation that others don't have. And that's what Jesus told them there in that, uh, that we read last week about how that the world didn't see him, but when we receive his word, we do see him. So that's where our life comes from. And that light was to the Gentiles. Let's go back now to this Isaiah 2. And uh, verse 2 again. And it shall come to pass uh, in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. Remember I showed you there in Acts the second chapter. This is for you and your children and as many as are far off. Far off brought in the Gentile race. All nations shall flow in unto it. Third verse. And many people shall go and say, come ye, come ye. I, I'm not one to want to tell you to go to church. I want to tell you to come to church. I want to tell you to come to Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ uh, gave, gave out the invitation, he said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. I ain't going to tell you to go to the church of your choice. You need to, go to the, you need to come to a church that is preaching the truth. Wherever God has got you and you know it's the truth, you need to do that. You need to study his word. You remember the disciples searched the scriptures to see if what the apostles was reading was true or not. So I want you to follow me. I want you to read it in the book. And by the way, it's King James Version. That's all I'll, all I'll read because I don't want something that's been changed or, or made to say what somebody else wants it to say. I want to read the Word of God. That's why we say, Come ye, let us go to the mountain of the Lord's house, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion goeth forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. I, that reminds me of the, the verse they, they said, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? He told them, said, Come and see. Why do you want to come to Jesus? You come to, the, to those good things, that word of God. Right quick, let's go to Isaiah, the 11th chapter, and the uh, 9th and 10th verse. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand for an ensign of the people. We'll get back to this next week. There's a lot more in this verse I want to read, but this is the part I want to get. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. Seek you the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Don't turn your heart away from Jesus Christ. Today if you will hear his voice, Harden not your heart as in the day of provocation. Don't turn away the Word of God. When the Word of God pulls at your heart and tells you you need to repent and be baptized and wash away your sins, believe it to be the truth. Do it. Repent. Turn. Turn to God. Know that He has you in the palm of His hands. Whether you're living for Him or not, all God has to do is snap that brittle thread of life and it's over. Let God save your soul. Come and visit us, 2211 South Dixie Highway, the Church of God to the Union Assembly. May God bless you is my prayer.